Samir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. So, so NFHS five data has come in, and there is some indicators of MPs that are really bad. In fact, on one indicator, MP is the worst in the in the country. So, uh, do you know what that is? And next question will be, how do you fix it? Are you aware? Uh, no, ma'am. Sorry, I'm not aware of that indicator. Okay, there it's are... the IMR. Yeah, infant mortality. Okay. So now, if you had to address the IMR and try to improve it, which area of IMR would you hit the first? What would you try to address? IMR is one, is one year huh? to one year, infant. And essentially, what's the denominator of that? Do you know? For per thousand, actually, per thousand uh, child born that is there. Oh, okay, you can revisit that denominator. But uh, so if you have to, um, if you have to address it, tell me quick cut, what would you address? Which part of it? Any idea? Ma'am, firstly, I will try to address the maternal health because a healthy mother will give birth to a healthy child. Secondly, okay. ma'am, I will also look at the uh, the cycle of uh, after uh, after birth, the immunization as well as the the, the nutrition needs. Uh, I will look into that angle. And lastly, the safe delivery, neighborhood labor room the deaths are there. So that also I will take into the into... nutrition, etc. You're talking about the mother. All that uh, you're talking about the mother. Huh? Of the child, newborn also. As so well so as then the... how does safe delivery come after the newborn child? In sequence? Ma'am, sequence, so maybe I, I will put a sequence. Okay, okay. all right. Um, read up on it. Okay. But actually, um, you were almost there. The biggest part of infant mortality is the neonatal mortality. So neonatal mortality definitely is helped by institutional delivery. But then postpart, it, it should not be hypothermia. It should not be a lot of things. You can read up. Because IMR is the indicator of MP that's worrisome. Which is the best indicator that has come out? Any idea? Some indicator of MP? Any, you can choose anything, any area where it's really done the best. We can so pass control, that. Controlling the total fertility rate like uh, this. Uh... I, I mean, it's any field, any field. It can be health, it can be literacy, uh, industrial, anything. It's open to you. Um, it's the agriculture growth that has come up. Uh, agriculture. How much has... is it? I think it's Sorry, I don't remember the figure, but it has been growing very fast in agriculture also. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also it's the fastest growing economies in the country. In the... You should know the data okay. and prepare it, huh? your state. Okay. <clears throat> now I'll make a statement. Agree or disagree with me. Uh, the government is selling the family silver to pay the grocery bill. You know the context I'm talking. So comment on this. Ma'am, in my opinion, this is not the case. Uh, the government is a uh, is uh, the, the government is privatizing the PSUs that are that may not be required uh, as such strategically. It is still keeping the strategic uh, PSUs and profit making PSUs with itself. Uh, whereas uh, it is also it is also tapping on the resources of the PSUs to fund the new infrastructure projects. Not so really. it is uh, it is balancing its fiscal deficit very clearly. <laughs> as the next secretary disinvestment, I can tell you that. Okay. Now, um, secondly, you partly hinted, what should be the criteria for, see, disinvestment is a broader term. Normally, what is talked about is minority stake sale. Yes, Strategic disinvestment is what we say is transferring the management or the ownership, right? And privatization is loose, a loose term. It can be from 51% to 100%. So now, um, what should be the criteria of Disinvesting in the sense of government getting out of PSUs. What should be the key criteria? Well, the following criteria can be used. Firstly, the substitute. Like if uh, there are sectors where the government uh, feels that a private sector has got an expertise, it can deliver those uh, projects at scale and at a good efficiency, then it should do that. Secondly, if some of the PSUs are making a, a loss from the last many, few, many years, and despite that, there not been a, a, a viable revival plan for them, then also the government can exit uh, that particular sector or like like it did with this uh, aviation. So, First criteria should be the strategic importance for the country. First okay. criteria should be how important it is. Okay. Then the second criteria about shedding this, shedding that, private profit, etc., etc. Now, should BHEL be privatized? I mean, in my opinion, BHL should not be privatized. Why? 
Ma'am, firstly, the BHL is a is a it has been a company that has been now diversifying into different areas, and it has been uh, secondly also it has been. It so has why been, will everybody will diversify? Na every PSU, the pharma PSUs are making cantharidine oil, or they are making that vermi compost. Imagine. Ma'am, secondly, it has it has this great expertise of these heavy engineering equipments that is very difficult to get even with the private sector. So mm -hmm. that expertise uh, may be lost, and employees may actually switch to other companies as such. Mm -hmm. so in that yeah, opinion, fair enough. all right. <laughs> now, how do we handle China? I, have I asked you this before? Uh, no, ma'am, you have not. I asked asked this of higher order candidates. So, so you have moved into that category now, yeah. militarily, diplomatically, and economically. Tell me on each of them, one or two lines. That's it. The key point on the militarily, diplomatically, and economic. Right. Well, firstly, militarily, we should uh, promote indigenization and uh, and the reforms in the armed forces so that uh, we can uh, uh, tackle them. Like uh, indigenization, I don't understand. Now you are confusing goals. If you are going to handle China, indigenization another goal. Uh, ma'am, like it's the theatrization of commands, like single command and two. It's a different thing. Uh, but I'm talking more about strategy vis-a-vis -vis China. Internally strengthening the armed forces, I get it. But st strategy vis-a-vis -vis China. Ma'am, developing the new areas like Andaman, Nicobar Islands, or where we can have this uh, command so that we can uh, counter them in this uh, in these uh, South China seas and uh, okay. the, and the Indo-Pacific also. Like new points we can bring, bring okay, in. Okay, let's see. Next one. Uh, next one. And diplomatically, uh, we can uh, we can uh, put pressure uh, through uh, UN and other agencies. Uh, UN about uh, the China's veto as well as the new alliances. How can like... we do through the UN? China has a veto there. How will we put pressure through the UN? Toothless tiger, not even a tiger. Toothless whatever worm. Maybe it is through like uh, like other alliances like Quad and like we are we are finding those alliances so we can uh, uh, we can do through that. And economically, we can uh, we can uh, uh, use a uh, services sector and artificial intelligence areas like that where we what can. What should be the criteria for? <clears throat> I will not even call it import substitution because import substitution necessarily means the thrust is on substituting uh, imports. But what should be the criteria for? Say, how should I put it without giving it away? Uh, what should be the criteria for? Say, uh, managing Chinese goods or uh, competing with Chinese goods, what should be the criteria for selection of sectors, to your mind? Well, firstly, the sectors which where we have uh, capabilities and we have potential, like, like labor, in, labor intensive sectors, we can, uh, we can, uh, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Secondly, in areas where we are very much uh, strategically dependent, like this uh, electrical vehicles areas, this batteries, where we have strategic uh, we, uh, interest okay, are there. Okay. Fair enough. Now, <clears throat> do you think making our, inuring our domestic market to China, by whatever strategy we discussed, we'll discuss it in the feedback, is more important or China plus one substituting China overseas, trying to compete with China overseas? Which do you think is more important for us today? Well, we can use the strategy first globalize, then localize. We can first increase our exports and then, then we can uh, create this okay. local... What are the issues in renewable energy? But tell me very briefly, in about 30, 40 seconds. The following issues are there in the renewable energy sector. Firstly, the lack of storage systems. Mm -hmm. Secondly, grid integration with the conventional sources of energy. Thirdly, absence of raw materials that are required for construction for making of solar panels. Fourth is tariffs. Tariffs are not uh, viable uh, as compared to the very good. other. Very good, very good. And what would you say are examples? Shall I ask? No, I'll ask the case study. <clears throat> now I put you in a different situation. You are DM of Kanpur, where the GT road passes, highway. Lots of deaths. First, you were DM of Shahjapur, yes, where sir. also there was an issue of hit and run. Truckers mm -hmm. were agitating, etc. Yes. Now you are DM of Kanpur, where there are a lot of deaths and people are on the street, they block the highway. What will you do? And tell me how you compare the two situations. Very good. Firstly, ma'am, I will uh, I will visit a spot 
i will talk to the people uh, i will talk to the leaders if there are some leaders who are uh, who are leading the protest about uh, about the about the issues well they demand the leaders in kanpur demand that the trucker should be arrested and the new provisions of that law should apply to them and there should be there should be speed breakers put big speed breakers put though there are certain norms as far as national highways are concerned i'm talking from a case, live case study by the way hmm. so then what will you do I mean, immediate, immediately, immediate step should be that to allow the traffic to pass. We have to, I have to force the orders that the traffic should be allowed to pass because uh, law and order should not okay, be disturbed. Fair now, tell me the difference in approach in the two things. Means uh, Shahjapur where the yes, yes, one very key difference in approach. What's that? I did explain it a bit earlier, but. I mean, like the way the the public servant should respond to a situation, like uh, in a way, like in. Oh, that was by the way. That was just the aside when you you commented that he should not behave like this. When I said you should know the whole story, but okay, we'll discuss in feedback. Huh? Thank you, Navneet. Please. From Samir. Yes, sir. Uh, there is a hearing going on today in uh, International Court of Justice. All over the newspapers. <laughs> what is this case about, and which countries are involved? Uh, sir, I have not read the newspaper today, but I think it will be about this Israel Hamas issue about this uh, petition that has been brought about this humanitarian uh, uh, ceasefire that is going on. So, okay. So, what is what is the petition? Which country filed the petition or application before the ICJ? South Africa filed a petition between ICJ, ICJ mm -hmm. that uh, about a ceasefire. Last time ICJ said that uh, uh, Israel sh Israel should not uh, Israel should respect the humanitarian angle, but at the same time it did not uh, order a ceasefire. Hmm. And uh, they the order they passed, as you said, they passed some order. Now, are the orders of are the judgments of International Court of Justice binding? How these can be enforced? So they are binding, but uh, for enforcing them, they are, there's a process to go to the UN. But in the UN, the the veto power is with the USA. So the USA is, is has been using that to protect Israel, using that veto power. Okay. Now you uh, talked about United Nations. United Nations is a much maligned institution today. There is a strong opinion that it has outlived its utility. So either it should be reformed or it should be replaced by another organization. Do you agree to that view? And if you agree, what is your suggestion? What kind of mechanism should be brought in place to replace United Nations? So in my opinion, the reformation of the United Nations is important. Uh, not uh, not a uh, removal of that and following reforms can be brought firstly the representation of more countries like uh, india brazil germany in the permanent members can be made secondly the veto power should go on uh, go off there should be consensus building among the among the nations thirdly a mechanism to ensure that the that the decisions of the un are binding on the countries that should be there okay now, there are a number of uh, countries with which we are negotiating free trade agreements. Can you tell me two, three, which are simultaneously going on with the countries? And can you can you tell me which are what are the bottlenecks in clinching the free trade agreements? So one is with UK. We are it is going on. Okay. Is what is the, the what is the hurdle between India and UK? What is the pain points, if I put it that way? So it is about a service sector, dairy imports from uh, and wine and uh, this from the UK has to be uh, import duties on that has to be reduced, and about the about the Indian workforce, Indian service at IT workforce in the U UK, easy easy visas for them. So there is an issue on that that is going on. Then there is also with the Eastern European uh, free trade agreement. We are we are Eastern European countries. We are uh, looking for agreement. So and also with the EU European Union also we are looking for an agreement. Any other country? So 
Okay. So uh, you said in your uh, uh, DAF that you are working with some NGO child shelter homes. Yes. Uh, relating to that, there are a number of suicides in Kota. Even today there is uh, one body has been found of a yes. young uh, boy and one more is missing. This year itself there have been I think more than nine suicides. Last year there were around 27 or 28. This year already we are in Feb, uh, half of Feb, and we have nine suicide. Suppose you are DM of quota. What steps will you take to prevent this kind of tragic suicides by young children? So following steps I will take. Firstly, the coaching uh, uh, discussion with the coaching institutes. I will ensure that coaching institutes uh, 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 discuss with coaching institutes in a way that they do not put pressure on the students by by claiming the by claiming uh, big things like about hundred percent selections and uh, about this pressure. Secondly, I will also provide uh, uh, counseling to the students. Like if I can, if I have a chance, I will try to organize sessions for them so that uh, to give them about the importance of uh, of uh, understanding what they are studying rather than going for marks and. Uh, Lastly, the government schemes regarding suicide prevention, uh, helplines, uh, uh, telephone lines, whatever they are, are there, that should be implemented. So that if anybody requires help, that person can approach the mechanism. What about role, role of parents? So role of parents is very important. Like when the coaching institutes, uh, I will be discussing with coaching institutes, it should be ensured that they do not give false hope to the parents also. Because many times parents are not very literate. So they they try to they try to hoax them by giving them false hopes. So the behavioral change among them should happen. Okay, so you you have you are uh, bachelor of electronics and electrical engineering is that right? Uh, so you have a technical background. Tell me briefly how technology can be used in making the administration more efficient and less prone to corruption. So following mechanisms can be done. First of all, accessible websites and mobile apps. The government services should be made available, available through online, online apps and websites. Secondly, disbursement of funds and scholarships should be through online direct benefit transfer mechanism that is there. Linking with Aadhaar and PAN so that the uh, beneficiaries are targeted uh, rightly. Thirdly, grievance citizen mechanism should be there. Any person who is who, who has any issues with the government service uh, can can approach the district administration uh, through online means. And lastly, awareness generation. Uh, use of online campaigns like social media can be used for uh, generating awareness about different issues and schemes of the government. Do you think? Poor people, they may be using now mobile apps and all those things. Poor people are less educated people. Can make use of these technological uh, innovations which you have suggested? So structural issues like uh, penetration of uh, electricity, internet connection, mobile phones is the is a is a base for that. Because yes, the, these are issues. But then uh, digital literacy has to be imparted and structural issues like this uh, infrastructure has to be created. So we have to we have to educate no, them. No, infrastructure is there. See, I will give you a live example. In uh, Telangana state, they introduced what is called Dharni scheme. You know, land registration and land uh, holdings were all uh, made available on uh, mobile app and, uh, you know, people could access it. But then uh, they found that huge racket where my land was given to somebody else, somebody else's land was given to somebody else. So it, it the technology resulted in more corruption than eliminating. So but technology has to supplement it with issues like geotagging or this Aadhaar seeding of this, uh, this because... Uh, no, everything they have done, they have also seeded with Aadhaar. So that is survey. Uh, that is where uh, awareness about uh, the digital uh, technologies and uh, should be there because uh, that's the only way we can move forward with it. We 
cannot avoid the technology there may be some harms but uh, the goods are greater than the harms in in my opinion okay now uh, india has a, a constitutional provision of having a financial commission yes. which distributes taxes between center and the states and they follow certain parameters which keep changing uh, every with every finance commission they suggest new parameters now uh, of late uh, the southern states have come up they have been protesting uh, that uh, their revenue share is going down as compared to other states now what are the, what are the grounds on which they are protesting so the grievances so regarding the criteria that has been followed the late last financial commission actually followed up a 15% for the population uh, population so southern states are saying that uh, and the population as per the 1970 uh, uh, the recent census so they are saying that it had it has to be fixed as per the 1971 census because they have been uh, following population control norms if the population figures of recently are taken then their share will be reduced but at the same time the finance commission is incentivizing the demographic uh, de demographic uh, uh, advantage that they have taken like the incentivize the family planning for them to reduce the grievances okay thank you samir okay. gori please okay samir good afternoon how are you don't be so serious Hmm? Yes. Okay. Now tell me. You know, you are serving in Reserve Bank of India for the last several years, <clears throat> and you are getting a salary of hundred fifty-four thousand, as I can see. And uh, you are trying for the civil services. This is your fifth attempt. Uh, why do you want to go into civil service? What is the reason? You are getting good salary. You are in a very prestigious organization, earning. You know. doing great so why do you want to change tell me so rbi is a very good organization but i want to join civil services because of the job diversity and also the chance that I, and i also see it as a career progression from the reserve bank to the civil services as a continuation of my role there so you don't think that the financial institutions are a good career provider like reserve bank of india so they are great providers of uh, great great providers of career but uh, uh, as as a question pointed out that they are financial institutions and they have a uh, working in a certain areas only whereas a civil servant you can uh, one can work in different areas so the reason that is the reason that i am opting for it okay if you are appointed as district magistrate of sagar one of the districts in your state what would you like to do what would be your four priorities so uh, the following four priorities will be there firstly sagar has a problem of, of water shortage that is what i have been informed by my, by my friends it is near the bundhelkhand area so it is a water shortage issues are there so water pipe water supply has to be ensured in that area uh, through the uh, through the adjoining areas secondly sagar does not have a good uh, medical college as well as a engineering college is not upgraded so i will request the government to upgrade the medical and engineering colleges thirdly employment creation the youth of the sagar has to move out uh, for employment so i will try to bring in more it companies and some other uh, other uh, industries so that employment can be created locally uh, lastly again the issues with mp is about the uh, about the uh, poor indicators some of the indicators are really poor there so we we'll look towards to improve those indicators do you think all these fall within the purview of a district collector can he actually do all that so district as a district collector i can definitely as a as a representative of the district uh, discuss with the state government and uh, and if and facilitate the all these things like getting of the land and getting the accreditations so that i can help with okay now you see our gdp is growing very fast but at the same time we have what we call in economics just distributive injustice on the one hand we have billionaires on the other hand we have very poor people what four steps you would recommend as 
a person in RBI to reduce this gulf between the poor and the rich. So the following uh, steps, uh, four steps I will recommend. Yes. Uh, firstly, sir, the income yes. tax reforms. And those who are at a higher end of the income will be taxed more so that the resources are available to the fund the others. Secondly, direct benefit transfer, uh, a, a universal income for the, those who are at the bottom of the pyramid. Thirdly, creation of jobs in the labor intensive sectors so that new employment is created. And uh, uh, lastly, the lastly steps to uh, deal with the supply side of inflation. Like provision of food and uh, to the uh, to the uh, uh, underprivileged, better targeting of subsidies. Do you think these are all being done right now? We have so many freebies for the poor. Uh, we are taxing fairly high the rich one, and when you tax very very high, then there's a lot of ev evasion. Like during Mrs. Gandhi's time, the highest tax bracket was ninety four percent, and nobody was paying the taxage. So, uh, don't you think we are doing all that and still the gap remains? In fact, uh, to some extent, it's widening. So, we are still not taxing agriculture income. At least some agriculture income up to a certain limit should be taxed. So, that will also stop the evasion. Secondly, universal so basic... great agitation going on in Punjab and Haryana. And if you tax agriculture income, don't you think there would be much more chaos in the country? But to ensure uh, ju justice and uh, social and economic justice, there are need to tax uh, income after a certain parameter because uh, okay. that is a feasible option. Okay, now development as freedom. Does it ring a bell in your mind? Development as freedom. So what I can understand from the statement is that uh, the right to develop one's capability like a it's not a statement it's a title mm -hmm. oh, sorry sir i have not heard of this title sir yeah you just search for this this was the book written by amritya sen okay. which brought him the nobel prize now tell me what is the theme of this book so it is regarding the welfare economics no, you are just guessing. You haven't seen it. Have you read it? No, sir. I have not read it. Sir, I have read his uh, capability theory. So I was... Uh, okay. Now the External Affairs Minister keeps talking about multi-alignment. You must have heard this word many, very, very often these days. What do we mean by multi-alignment? So it is a kind of issue-specific diplomacy that we align with countries as per our interest. Give me an example. Like we hmm. may be a part of a Shanghai Cooperation Organization also because we want to strengthen our relation with Central Asia. Uh, we may be a part of uh, this quad also because we have to, despite it, uh, China considering it against itself because we want a freedom in Indo-Pacific. And we also like uh, is in the Israel-Palestine issue, we are supporting a two-state solution also. And at the same time, giving humanitarian aid. So it's alignment different issues. Okay. Thank you, Samir. Thank you. Thank you, Gauri. Varun, you're next. Okay. Uh, Samir, uh, you, uh, which attempt is this? Sir, fifth attempt, sir. Fifth attempt. And uh, Samir, when was your first attempt? So my first item was 2018, but I didn't prepare. That was only a... That's fine. That's fine. So when you started to prepare, uh, what was your basic motivation to prepare for UPSC? Sir, I got my basic motivation when I was in college only. Mm -hmm. Basic motivation was seeing my father's job, my mother's job, and my mm -hmm. work at a shelter home. So I wanted mm -hmm. to do all these kind of jobs. So okay. all these kind of jobs can now, be done in the civil Across side. time, do you think you have somehow, you know, displaced from the original core of ideals of your uh, preparation? Now, you already been working in RBI since how many years? Since 2017, so six and a half 2017, years. 2017, six and a half years in an organization. Do you think there's some kind of goal displacement that has happened? 
no sir actually uh, i was uh, preparing for civil service only but i wanted to be independent mm -hmm. so i look started looking for opportunities uh, that can be cleared through the upsc preparation and also are good career options mm -hmm. so rbi was the best among those so i thankfully i cleared rbi and then i continued my preparation for civil service okay right uh, you love playing badminton yes how will you encourage uh, you know people play you know to play badminton in india though obviously people would be doing a good job itself uh, till now but how would you encourage for this so firstly i will uh, tell them the advantages of playing badminton let the me reframe and... it uh, give me so re i'll reframe it i want to make badminton the next cricket okay if this is and you are been made the sports authority of india's head right and you've been given a free hand what steps would you take 1 2 three firstly the sporting infrastructure in every district and every town mm -hmm. uh, secondly uh, sporting academies and equipments and indigenous manufacturing of equipments because that happened with cricket bats mm -hmm. and balls were manufactured in india but what is not happening with badminton as such mm -hmm. and lastly i will uh, uh, i will uh, request the ex players who are already giving a lot to the game to popularize the sport among the people and also the corporate social responsibility i will try to incorporate these things in the csr rules okay right oh uh, check up so sami what was this recent paytm crisis so there was a circular from the reserve bank of india sorry that barred paytm from accepting uh, deposits uh, after 29 february 2024 it was supervisory action by the reserve bank of india because of non compliance of PT, by ptm and other material supervisory concerns uh, what were the non compliances non compliances with the kyc norms of the reserve bank and other uh, deficiencies that are found in the audit report uh, and do you think uh, ptm would will survive so if ptm if, if ptm is able to comply with the guidelines of the reserve bank it will survive or it may be purchased by some other bank it may have to sell the business to the other banks uh, will it encourage or discourage other fintech companies to to take up maybe more expansionary methods will it Sorry. encourage fintech fintech space in india or discourage it so it will encourage fintech space uh, uh, seeing the, uh, because that it will show that regulator is very agile and very alert so if if they are doing it uh, ethically business then the regulator will support them but uh, it will also discourage play players who are not finding the ethical norms so a level playing field will also be created and uh, sami uh, uh, th this is your second interview upsc interview yes sir uh, what what has changed from the last interview so i will i will say that my mains performance is better this time i i believe okay. secondly i am uh, brushing more on the rbi technical stuff last time i had missed some out of on some of those okay and uh, Uh, lastly lastly before the interview two three days i am trying to be more relaxed and composed last time i was a bit panic at the last last hours and i had a long long time for the interview so that actually made me overthink a lot this okay. time i have comparative lesser time so that is better okay so so what 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 is the connection between rbi and imf uh, sir uh, rbi follows the imf standards that are uh, that they have uh, set uh, uh, the standard reporting standard that, that they have set and uh, rbi also has a seat in the R imf like uh, uh, rbi governor sits uh, anything related with sdrs uh, special drawing rights are there like uh, rbi rbi has the special drawing rights uh, reserves also foreign reserves also all right that's it thank you so much okay samir formal interview over thank you What are your? When is your interview date, incidentally? Twelfth uh, March. Twelfth March. Of time. So, how did you fare now? How are you? How's your progression basically this time? Ma'am, I have to do more on the MP issues because I am lagging on the MP stuff. I am revising it now. I have to revise it again, MP. Mm -hmm. I made the notes, but I have not revised it. So, I have mm -hmm. to revise the MP thing. Mm -hmm. I am currently studying RBI and electrical engineering. So these are the two areas I am studying now. How did you? Apart from newspaper. How do you think you fared today? 
Ma'am, MP question, I should be better because I've not studied them thoroughly mm -hmm. now. So, can that question, apart from that, uh, there is always a room for improvement, I, my mm -hmm. opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll speak specifically about, uh, incidentally, your career progression thing goes against what your, gov your governor did. He's career regression huh, from civil service to RBI. He's in regression or what? Ma'am, he's also in progression and he's in regression. <laughs> but he was also in progression only because he was an India Finance Commission member, then Sherpa. And you then don't he... have to seriously answer that. Okay, okay. You talk about progression na? every time you say progression. So then he's from civil servant to RBI. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yes, your, your MP1 you need to pick up and not just NFHS or health indicators, but everything about MP. Mythology, history. If you really aim for that, then you have to be really up. I assume Bhopal history used to, you know, that's why I didn't ask you. Parmar, Bhoj, all that stuff. But uh, uh, thinking questions are the ones where I think you you should be targeting. This base thing. Knowledge is the base for a candidate like you. For you, the next level is the thinking part, the opinion part. Uh, there, I feel that one, you shouldn't shoot off the hip straight away. You should pause and structure your reply. Always leave a scope for getting wriggling out of it. Don't just, uh, again, you did. I asked you two, three opinion questions. I asked you on the uh, on disinvestment, family silver, and you jumped to deny it and, 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 and justify everything that was happening. But incidentally, the deficit is being managed with that. It is. It's not being used for investment at all. And if you recall, in 2015, when we had uh, uh, the oil, the oil, oil prices oil. crashed, that is the time we should have made some fund there. We still didn't do it. We still managed our, our fiscal deficit. I, if I recall the figure, 3.9 to 3.6, they had to come with the coal India disinvestment. Of 24,500 crores we got, single largest global transaction one day till date. We retained 205%. We retained 22,500. Okay. So that is a question that you have to uh, look at. Um, PHEL criteria, yes. Uh, what should be the criteria? Criteria has to be the strategic importance to the country, first of all. How important that sector is to the company, the government. Then after that, you look at the performance. You may decide to keep loss-making units and subsidize them also. You may decide to, to, to sell profitable units also. Like Concord, they are thinking of, I don't know how long they've been going on doing about selling, selling, selling. Uh, I have my suspicions why it's not sold. But it's a profit-making unit. Now, uh, China. Now, this was a difficult question which needed you to think and then reply. So first I asked you militarily. And uh, where did you go? You started structuring our military. It was basically with a view to tactics. I was looking at the Ladakh front, the Arunachal front, and the Sikkim front. What you should be doing there? Should you? This was a takeoff from today's news where Dokkalam now, they've started peopling it. People have started coming. Military installations have started coming. Ladakh. Villages have started coming with multi-purpose, military purpose also. So yes. it was to do with that. One thing that we are doing is we are building our roads. Big road projects everywhere on the front with China. It's another matter. There is, as my local guide had said, that the generals come and take whatever. And uh, the, the the climatic condition being what is the condition maintenance is poor. But we have thought of building a good infrastructure. They're on the plateau. Their tanks come right till your Lipu Lake. That's the Mansrover route. And for us, that, that thing gets wiped out every range. The whole road vanishes, only a mountain left. So that's one thing, strategic infrastructure. Then after that is also the local populations along the border. Then is alliances. It's partly diplomatic. Part. You did mention Quad somewhere along the line. Uh, in some way, it's a diplomatic thing. Then I asked diplomatically, uh, you did not mention anywhere the string of pearls and this and the diamond necklace, which I thought is what you would have done both on both these fronts. Military, we are trying to they try to hem us in, we are trying to hem them in further. Then also you could have referred to our presence in the Red Sea and Gulf of Eden and all that. That is also basically it's a multi-purpose strategy, and that is one place where I think that we are successfully intervening in something that's a global need today. So be it the pirates of Somali, be it Houthis, be it whoever. We are, we are also muscle flexing in the Indian Ocean. China is already there. Djibouti is their base. Right? Maldives yes. screaming and shouting. They are also there. They have in, in Hambantota also. So 
think through these things. These are different. So it's a very difficult, not an easy question. I'd have thought you'd I'd have thought that you would have thought and then replied. And then economically, you did hem around and then get to that. To my mind, the economic thing is how strategically important it is to India, how critical the inputs are. And I would have put APIs there because our whole pharma industry is dependent on China, largely. And secondly, I would have put your renewables. That's why then that led to my second question about, uh, and of course, it is assumed that we have to, if we don't have the strength, we have to develop the strength for it. Not working the other way around. So that's why I did not use import substitution. As, import substitution means it's an economic term. More than that, it though it's an economic strategy. It is it is more to do with protecting ourselves. Then I asked the China plus one and domestic. I it can be both opinions. I would actually prefer because for myself, I mean it, it's it's open. It's not mutually exclusive strategies. But if I had to make a choice, I'm my own best market. My strength of my economy is my market. I'm my own market. Which, why is US interested, X, Y, they're interested in us? Because for market, a population, right? So I would have looked at making my own strength in my own economy. But the other one is, it's not mutually exclusive. Uh, then your, uh, yeah, your two case study. <clears throat> I did hint also. Last time I told you, when you mentioned about the DM and this, that and the other, I said, look, all he had to do was maintain that there was no breach of peace because he had no role in the real negotiations. The solution was beyond his hands. He only had to make sure there was no breach. In the Kanpur episode, the solution lies in his hands. That's the difference in approach. And I, I mentioned the facts to you. Because mm -hmm. there, there has been a road accident there. And this was actually a place when I was in Kanpur. Uh, the, the trucks used to just mow down. There's a government college and they used to mow down the students. Every day they were blocking the road. So then we had to take steps. We had to take action, etc. So you should remember when you're given a case study, quickly think of the parameters. What is it? Is it in my hands? Is it outside my hands? One of the other panelists also asked you, you were DM Sagar. So, and then he hinted also, he said that, but that, uh, is that in your control? So when you asked a question like that, first you think, what is in my control? Look at that first. And then you say where you're a facilitator with somebody else, you have to send it upstairs. So always remember that is a strategy for answering a question. Don't answer with something beyond your control. <clears throat> okay. Uh, also prepare the key actors in Gaza. You know, what is happening uh, now, you know, more and more like South Africa has emerged as a key actor. Qatar and, and, and this one, have, uh, Egypt have emerged. Why? Because Rafa now is being breached. So now where will they go? They'll get, get into Egypt. Now US has come up with some wishy-washy something at least. So uh, analyze what's happening, what's not happening in all these, even Ukraine. Don't ignore it. You don't know between now and 12th March what else may crop up. Yes. Always, it's a way of thinking, a way of approaching a thing, you know. Okay. How you look at it scientifically. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Sometimes you, you're a very good candidate and but I'm trying to make you an extraordinary candidate, right? So you have to think, you have to be strategic, you have to learn how to frame your replies, frame your thinking and then your reply, okay? And that's but Baki to your current affairs, 100 topics, all that, I think you already are not going to get into that. All the best. Navneet. Uh, Samir. Oh, uh, you have opted for IFS as number two, just yes. right? Yes. So uh, you got to read something, especially because your interviews uh, maybe on eighth March, you said. Twelfth March, March twelfth. Twelfth March. So there are not many days, but you should read about. You know, there are fifty FTA negotiations are going on at present, simultaneously with fifty this thing, but. Important ones are EU, UK, Australia. Now, what are the hurdles? What are the pain points? Where we are stuck? You know, at least for the major FTA negotiation, you should be reading because every day it is in newspaper. Even today, it is there. And what is our uh, problem with the uh, UK? What is our problem with EU? What they are looking for? What we are looking for? Why we are stuck? So, it's in newspaper. You should read it. Similarly, a quota. You know, the the biggest problem is that you have to interact with parents, that they should not push their children to coaching institutes where there is no playgrounds, no other uh, facilities. They're only, uh, you know, doing uh, just cramping and uh, uh, solving maths and chemistry and physics questions for IIT. There is too much a pressure on that. And there is a pressure from parents also, because that's one of the main reasons. 
most of these children are committing suicide because they don't want to show their face to parents because they are afraid of failure. So the attitude of parents have to change. So in district administration, you have to interact with parents. That's a, one of yes. the most important Very things. Important. Apart from, uh, you know, uh, putting in place uh, counseling and, uh, uh, you know, talking to uh, the coaching institutes wala and all those things. Those are, of course, there. But the main thing is parents. Because these children are of impressionable age. They are only hardly... 16, 17, 14, 15, at that age, they are bring um, brought to. So you have to think on this thing because these are current topics. And then, because like today also, there was a, I told you, a body was found. So these type of questions could be asked and you have to think and reply. And you must prioritize what you can do, what you should be doing first, and second, and third. That is, you know, that is extremely important when you tell. Of course, uh, now, uh, not to means uh, uh, I must emphasize that word affairs, India's relation, because foreign service is your second choice. You have to prepare yourself and you have to be very, very clear. On ICJ also, like I asked you, now uh, yesterday it was in newspaper because I think today the hearing is starting again. So you should be knowing that. You know, these are important words. Thank you. Wish you all the best. Gori. Okay, Samir, you have been given uh, good advice by others. I'll just supplement one or two things here. One is that you should prepare your question, why do you want to shift from RBI to civil service pro properly? Because your answer is not so convincing. And moreover, the work you suggested that you will do as DM is so vast that even a CM will not be able to do that. <clears throat> So don't, uh, uh, you know, enhance your converse beyond uh, uh, the realities. It should be more realistic than uh, imaginary. Okay, so that is one thing I would suggest. The second is about rich and poor, the, what should you do? Uh, the steps you suggested, they're all being taken. Now, what I will suggest, uh, one or two things. One is that we have to promote skills. There's a lot of problem in skill development in the poorer section of the society. The skill development is not working properly. Secondly, the minimum wage laws have to be have to have a relook because those laws have to you know enhance the wages. And then we have to look after the marginal uh, you know people in in variety of ways, marginal farmers, marginal uh, artisans, you know, to support them how to work out certain uh, economic support system for them. So these are the new measures which I would suggest because taxing the rich beyond a point will not help because there would be a tax evasion beyond that. So I think these are two things which I would like to have. But your answer to multi-alignment was very good. Uh, freedom as development, you should know, because it's uh, our own countryman who was given Nobel Prize and is very well known on that. Otherwise, you are very good. As uh, the chairperson mentioned, you are very good and you will do very well. So, I wish you good luck. Thank you. Varun, would you like to add something? Okay. So, Samir, uh, you know, uh, I think you have worked in various areas in RBI, very briefly. Only, so, sir, DI, only sir, information technology I have worked, sir. Okay. So, CBDC, I think you worked in, I think I remember. Uh, sir, NEFT, RTGS, I am working. Uh -huh. So, okay. So, let's say if they give you the uh, floor, right, to uh, introduce yourself, right? mention uh you know exactly what you do okay there in the rbi so that you can take them that area okay yes. otherwise what happens a general so they'll start with what are the functions of rbi and all those things right where uh perhaps uh you know only your elocution can be checked rather than your you know knowledge or maybe i give you some marks there right so let them and if they're giving more situational questions assume they want to give you marks okay so you should smile Okay. okay. Right. Ki, okay. Uh, you know, now they want me in, right? So more situational questions means they want, they just want to satisfy themselves by giving you some questions where you can easily prove that, yes, you can be an administrator. Okay. That's the other part, right? Uh, so my view is only that uh, the, the crux of the situation in your case is after six years, why do you want to shift to civil services? 
that is the only question perhaps i will ask in different ways in the interview okay so uh, i should always feel that you want to do it that is all okay if i if i want to i would i every other question for me is just i just want to confirm the fact that yeah is it good that samir comes from the rbi to the civil services or not right both for the civil services as well as for samir okay right in fact, Samir, last time we, you had like good marks, 168, last time I checked. Yes, sir. So, you build it. 168 to 180, 190 journey. And he is slightly more confident and shorter answers. Answers are very short and very crisp. So, I think that's it. Ma'am, you have to feedback. Sir, regarding the answer from civil, uh, RBI to civil services, my answer has been about job diversity only. And say, one thing more I have to use to add in this about is like uh, policy making, policy implementation and working in different geographies. So there were counter questions like last year in some mocks. So my answer has been always been diversity as well. It is, uh, see, uh, Sabir, counter normally nahi hota hai. Well, uh, as in ma'am and so everybody, they never would counter you. Right? Uh, remember, so the main interview counter they you, expect yes. you to be very well, you know, uh, it should. It's not just the answer. It is the way you answer. It is the expression on your face. All those things come, come into play. They say na Gauri sir ne bhi bhi jaise wohi bola ki na ki convincing nahi laga ya convincing laga. Bas utna hi conviction wali baat hai. Ha. Okay. The it does. It's not coming out that what do you really want to do, right? Because you have a wonderful job, mind you. Right? You can people... bring in a couple of things into it. Hmm. One is not that after six years I want to do it. I have been trying continuously. Yes. It's been a goal for me. That could be one way. Second thing is that, uh, yes, uh, I can make more of a difference in more lives and I can see the results of my work faster. As your district magistrate, you can see what is happening. I'm in touch with more people. It's more of a human face. Yes. No doubt this policy making at a senior stage will do in the IS, in the Reserve Bank also. Hmm. But um, this is something that you have the human face also. You think through. And then, of course, there are a variety of opportunities in different sectors. But then as everyone is saying, it shouldn't be something coming out pat that you have learned. It should be something that you really feel. Hmm? Your delivery, I mean, you know, you're, everyone said you have to be a little more cheerful, a little more relaxed. You're good. So why are you so tense? Uh, I don't know. That's that's so something that I've Better been... today than the other day. I mean, the other day, though, I thought <laughs> that you were going to sing through the floor. So you're so good in your replies. But today you are better. You're sitting on home ground, a little more relaxed. Though you should be clean shaven when you go for the interview properly. But you're looking relaxed there. Chalo, theek hai, hai. But you consciously have to practice and relax yourself. Do breathing, do whatever. Because yes. your best will come out. You have to look relaxed and in command of the situation. You yes. know? Okay. Okay. Thank Anything you. Anything you want to ask any one of us or you had enough? Uh, no, I'm not actually. This only I have been very serious enough. No? So that's only I have been trying to be conscious of doing that. But sometimes, uh, like, I've been doing trying to do that. I have doing mirror practice also. Yeah. No, no, today think... you are more unwound than that day. Yes, so you are much so, better so, today. So, so hopefully, the progression will go up, like your career progression. <laughs> Let's see. Thank you, man. Thank you for the feedback. Man. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Good luck. Good luck to you.